record this for all our colleagues who weren't able to make it today. Uh, here's our agenda. Uh, we'll start off with some welcome introductions. Uh, again, my name is Hugh Brewster. I'm the Executive Director of Transforming Faces uh, here in Toronto, Canada. And uh, um, joining me, you'll meet uh, Becca uh, from our team, uh, who will be providing quite a bit of support to this network as we get off the ground. Uh, we'll spend a few minutes just reviewing what the Circle of Cleft Professionals approach is, uh, what, what, what this is intended to be, at least as a starting point, uh, and then get into some technical elements. Uh, so the Zoom uh, feature platform that we're using here is quite powerful. Uh, Becca will be able to provide us a, a small overview of some of the ways uh, that it can be used if you haven't used it before. Uh, and then I was delighted to see uh, yesterday and then early this morning, uh, some of us have already jumped onto Slack, uh, another quite powerful discussion forum, uh, and Becca can give us some good tips on how to get off to a good start and make the most use of, of that uh, the, you know, quite uh, detailed and powerful tool uh, called Zoom. Uh, and then after that, we'll have a chance for any technical questions and answers around those two, those two pieces that might be new to some of us uh, today. Uh, and then finally, just as a discussion starter, uh, Transforming Faces has developed uh, an acronym that helps explain its approach or what it's noticed from its partners in terms of what comprehensive cleft care is, uh, and that's uh, the CLEFT uh, acronym. So we'll walk through that briefly and then provide a bit of a sense of what's next for the COCP uh, and finally end off with a little bit of discussion, uh, which will hopefully move over to the discussion board following this, uh, uh, this meeting today. So that's a little bit of what we're doing, and as I mentioned, uh, we'll be finished within 60 minutes for sure. So to, get, to, to jump right in, um, many of you will have seen this overview before, but, but where did this idea of the circle of cleft professionals come from? And uh, as I've told the story several times in the last few weeks, uh, meeting with, with some of you and explaining uh, what we have in mind and where this came from, uh, it, for, for me in particular, uh, as a relatively new person to the cleft field, uh, my first major conference was Cleft 2017 in Chennai. And, uh, and, and I did have the opportunity to meet several of you on the call uh, at that point. And this, this initiative really emerged from those discussions uh, where some of our partners in terms of transferring faces as partners were saying, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity to gather, uh, to, to exchange ideas, to make some presentations, uh, but it is a long time to wait, uh, four years, uh, including all the cost involved of, of, of moving people around uh, to have some of this. Is there a way that some of those conversations can be, can be strung forward? Uh, we do have colleagues in places like Sick Kids uh, Hospital in Toronto, other places who are interested in what's happening in low and middle income countries in terms of cleft care, and they're looking for better ways of connected, of learning what's happening uh, and, uh, and contributing to the discussion uh, wherever possible. Uh, and so he said, well, we don't, we don't seem to have a good platform for that. So, so really, uh, the, the Circle of Health Professionals comes from that desire to have deeper collaboration uh, between those in well-resourced contexts as well as those in low- and middle-income countries. Um, there's a real hope and, and um, need, we believe, for uh, an opportunity to share some real practical insights. What is actually working um, you know, in, in some of these lower resource contexts? Uh, what are some good practices that have emerged in terms of delivering uh, comprehensive cleft care to, to children and families? And um, how can we learn from one another? Uh, both from you know south south as we talk about sometimes, or or between north south, you know there's lots there uh, that can be helpful as we move our, our own professional practices forward. And finally, I think that uh, one of the pieces that really emerged for me out of Cleft 2017 was that comprehensive cleft care is acknowledged now as as a a real goal to pursue everywhere. Um, that uh, that there there really is uh, you know even in some of the large charities. Uh, an emphasis now in talking about comprehensive cleft care. Uh, the, the, the research seems really clear that uh, in many cases, a surgical only approach is not going to get to lead to the best outcomes in full rehabilitation. Uh, so we want to capture some of that and say this is a great time to talk about and shape what comprehensive cleft care will be uh, going into the future. So those are three key elements of, of what we were thinking about in, in launching this. Uh, we're delighted. Uh, that already we have some key partners who are saying, yeah, these are things that our partners uh, in countries around the world are looking for, and we'd love to contribute. Uh, so as you can see from this slide, Deutsche uh, Kleft Kinderhilfe, DCKH, out of Germany, uh, and its Indian expression, ABMSS, uh, 
both have said yes, this is something that our, our surgeons and our cleft professionals are looking for in developing and deepening their approach to comprehensive cleft care. Uh, Project Harar, an organization that works in India uh, with a large connection to cleft work, has also said yes, this is something that, uh, that we would like to contribute to. Uh, Dr. Brian Summerlad, many of you will, will have met at different conferences around the world, uh, and, and the charity, charity that he's associated with, Cleft Bridging the Gap, has just come on board saying yes, this is something we're excited about as well as well as Gareth Davies and, and the European Cleft Organization along with TF. Uh, so this is a starting point. Uh, as, uh, as I talked about with, with many people uh, in the last couple of months about what we had in mind, uh, this is not intended to be a Transforming Faces uh, initiative. Uh, we're happy to host it. We're happy to get it started. We're happy to, to, to talk it up and, and provide some support. Uh, but the intention is to open up to anyone who has a real interest in comprehensive cleft care in low and income countries, and so some of these conversations continue. Um, the four key things that we have in mind, at least as a starting point for what this is about, uh, one has to do with a website, which I, I hope most of you have said, uh, cleftcircle.org. Um, we will be trying to, to rally together uh, some good stories and summary of, of what's happening in different places and, and what are some key updates, some key breakthroughs that we're seeing, uh, and that will be through an e-newsletter. Uh, definitely the, the major new piece that we hope to bring is, is the Slack uh, interactive platform where discussions can happen and where cleft professionals uh, like the people on this call can really take it where it needs to go. Uh, that not all of these discussions need to be emailed to an organization like TF or DCTH and then pushed back out to, uh, to countries around the world, but uh, allowing professionals just to, to take it where it needs to go, posting um, questions that they have or ideas, papers that they've published. Uh, upcoming events that they're involved with, uh, really a, a sense of, of uh, what is it the most critical thing to, to ask questions about and to, and to get some input and to share what we're learning. So, so we have a lot of hope that Slack will be that, that function. Uh, we do have about 250 licenses for this, uh, so we have some space to grow. Uh, and our hope, again, would be this to be a very vibrant place uh, that, that uh, all cleft professionals, and, and again, the idea also is that it's not uh, just for, um, one discipline specific. So as a surgeon, you, know, you might be quite interested in, 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 in looking through what, what some of the SLPs are talking about, or um, you know, all, all uh, cleft professionals have an interest in making sure that kids have good nutrition to be able to, to, to make and, and, and achieve some of the rehabilitative milestones. So, uh, so Slack is, is the third piece. And then finally, as we're talking about today, just a webinar, you know, an opportunity for members, professionals who are, who are working on different issues and problems in their own context have a chance to share what they're up to and, and what they've learned so far. Uh, and we're committing at least to have uh, about four of them this year, but again, as, as there's interest grows and, and support uh, um, increases, we'll be happy to host more of those. So, so that's, a, that's a little bit of a start of where we're at. And, and do stay tuned. I think we'll talk a little, a little bit, but uh, we will have a, a, a bit of a roster of the upcoming webinars and we'll release that very shortly. So uh, who's involved, who's on this list? Uh, as you heard some of us already uh, introducing ourselves, uh, many of us know each other from different contexts, but we also have some new, uh, some new colleagues which we're, we're really excited to, to welcome to this space. Uh, and we've been inviting anyone who's a cleft professional, and we are including in that cleft charity leaders, uh, so, so staff, people of organizations like Transforming Faces. Uh, we really want to have people who have a sense uh, of real interest and passion for global child health, uh, that you know, they definitely have insights they'd like to share and a desire to learn and collaborate. Uh, at this point, we're, we're, we're saying we're really looking for people who can participate in English, uh, and we know it's a challenge in some contexts, so we really want to extend a warm welcome to those who are working on improving their English, who are going to be using Google Translate as they post things. Uh, and, and again, even on the Slack platform, I mean, there's no impediment at all to having direct messages that go back and forth to professionals in, in Spanish or in Thai or you know whatever people feel more com most comfortable in. But we're saying at this point, we're going to provide the infrastructure and the support and webinars in, in English and, uh, and and go from there. Uh, the one limitation that we've seen so far is is uh, you know we do have a sort of limited number of licenses and trying to to make sure that we do keep our focus on professionals. So we're not going to be opening up the network to people who are doing maybe you know a small unit in their class on, on class and you know posting well what is class or etc. We're we're trying to keep people who have who are actually actively practicing uh, class care in, in one of their fields. So that's uh, one of the things we're looking for in the application process. 
So who have we seen so far? And this has been quite exciting. Uh, so we have over 70 cleft professionals uh, that have already applied and, and many uh, will be involved today. Some people will be watching this later on uh, video uh, and definitely people are still getting up to speed as we just uh, opened up the Slack uh, discussion forum yesterday. But you can see uh, primarily so far we have surgeons uh, who, are, who, are, who have joined up uh, next by, by speech therapists. Uh, and then uh, even some people who are in other fields, and, and that can be some other different forms of orthodontics, um, uh, social work, etc. So you can see a little bit of the, the range that we have so far. Uh, we don't have any psychologists yet, although we know that uh, many psychologists do work in the class care, so we look for, for representation. If you have someone in your, in your network who would be keen to contribute, please let them know and, and uh, invite them to, vote, to apply. Uh, and then nobody whose primary connection is professional development or capacity building. Uh, but again, that, that is something that, that came up often uh, in people's interest in the COCP was in growing the capacity of their teams and, and, and contributing to ongoing professional development. Uh, we're also really thrilled uh, that we have people on five continents. Uh, and if you're finding the timing for today's webinar a little bit strange, uh, yeah, that, that's a bit of the challenge, is trying to make it not so early uh, that the people in North America and South America uh, it, would find it too difficult, but also not so late that our friends like Dr. Bowen Sip uh, or, or Rupa in India you know, would find it so late that it would be impossible to join. So uh, that, that's exciting for us to see already five continents represented. What have we learned so far? Uh, well, it's been fantastic to be reviewing some of these applications. Uh, you can see a bit of a word cloud on the right-hand side of my screen about some of the things that came up when we asked people, what, what, what are you interested in? Why are you applying? What, what is it that, about the COCP that's appealing to you? Uh, so things that stand out, you know, the idea of success, exchange, insights, uh, comprehensive care, growing a skill set, uh, often interest in better surgeries, uh, interaction, connection, successes, and failures. Uh, and I think that that captures uh, for us a lot of what we're hoping to see within the COCP and our interest in supporting it. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see the sense of, of wanting to collaborate, uh, have opportunities to share knowledge, uh, enriching some of their work in cleft lip and palate uh, management, and definitely that sense of having uh, everyone having something to contribute. So um, I think we would share uh, the comment that there is still so much to do. This is really a moment for comprehensive cleft care, but we know uh, that there's a lot, a long way to go, and, and we're excited to journey together. So uh, if you're looking at after this quick overview, you know what, what comes next. Definitely, we, we'd hope that you'd be involved and check out this discussion forum uh, on Slack. Uh, my colleague Becca, in just a second, is going to provide a little bit of an overview if you're finding it a little bit um, overwhelming or, or, or not sure what all the functionality is. Uh, please, that, that's the, probably the primary uh, offering that we can make to this group is saying join the discussion. Uh, if you do have a webinar that you've uh, you know, a presentation that you've made that's short, leads to this discussion, that's very practical focused. I think that's one of the things we're trying to have distinctive about this network is we really want to emphasize some of these ways of actually implementation. You know, what is the research or learning that you're doing that could actually be uh, helpful in someone in the actual, their actual uh, less, uh, rehabilitation journey uh, with families and children in, in low and middle income contexts. So if you have a webinar that you'd like to recommend or one that you would like to present, let us know. Uh, and then we're starting to build out a small library. So we've got a few ideas in, in each of these, but you'll see on the COCP website, which again is clefcircle.org, uh, that, uh, that if you have a resource that's been really helpful to you, or that you've published, or that you're aware of, let us know. We'll put a link to it there, and we can hopefully start to build out people's uh, understanding of, of what's out there. What are the most helpful tools? What are the most practical uh, research elements or, or, or ideas that are out there? And hopefully that will actually even transfer over into the discussion. So if you if you do post something uh, on the library, let us know about it. Then start a discussion on, on Slack. Say, this is why I found this helpful. What do you think? Uh, and then finally, we are looking to, to continue to build out this circle. Uh, 70 definitely uh, is probably not enough to sustain the discussion on the level we'd love. So uh, we'd like. So if you see someone, you know someone in your cleft team or someone else, a colleague that you think would be uh, perfect for this. You know, feel free to, to send them the, the link and just ask them to, to mention how they found out about it. That helps us understand just who's joining and, uh, and where people are coming from so that we can accept them and welcome them to the circle. So before, um, without any further ado, uh, I will pass over to my colleague Becca, uh, Becca Sawyer, who's our uh, Special Projects Coordinator here at Transforming Faces. She'll run through a little bit of technically what we're up to and then provide a space for some uh, interactions and questions and answers. 
Hello, everyone. It's great to meet you. Um, I've met some of you before, but um, I'm happy to be meeting some of you this way and hope to um, be able to interact with you in the future. So I just wanted to give a quick little run through of um, both Zoom and Slack. I know if you're watching me right now, then you've successfully navigated Zoom. So that's great, um, but there might be some people who are just calling in who might need some help or um, folks that will join us at future webinars. Um, so for every webinar um, going forward, you're going to receive a calendar invite, um, which looks like this, and it will have the Zoom meeting link in it each time. Um, that's what we're going to use, so make sure you check your calendar invites for those webinars. Um, and you can click on that link, and it will take you to a page like this, and there will be another pop-up box that will ask you to either click OK to run um, Zoom meetings or will tell you to open Zoom meetings. Um, it might look like a scary box because we all know we shouldn't click on things on the internet that we don't know what they are, but you have to click OK in order to actually get um, to our webinar. Uh, once we're in the webinar, um, like you can see here, um, these are the different options you've got. Uh, in, if you bring your mouse um, or your cursor down to the bottom of your screen, um, a, a dialog box or like a little band should pop up and in the left corner you will have the option to mute or unmute yourself or to start your video or to end your video. Um, and then in the middle there's this little bubble um, that is the chat icon and if you click on that um, it will bring up this uh, chat box on the side where you can type in any questions that you have to us while the webinar is going on um, and then we can read them there. And if you need to leave the meeting, there's this little red um, thing there that for, your, for you should say exit meeting and you can click on that um, and you can leave. Uh, we will have a second for questions um, afterwards, but I'm just going to do a little bit of black too. So yesterday, you should have received an invite um, to join our Slack workspace. If you didn't, um, check your junk mail to see if it's there, or you can email us at info at clefcircle.org, and I can make sure that you're invited. Um, the great thing about Slack is you can use it on your desktop um, or on your mobile phone um, as an app right there, too. So you've got two options. Uh, once you accept your invitation to Slack, it'll ask you to create an account, which you can just use your email to do that. Um, and then it will take you, if you just go to slack.com slash login, it will take you something that looks like this, where you can sign into your workspace. Our workspace is clustcircle.slack.com, and then it will ask you to sign in once you've created your account. Um, once you are inside Slack, which I've already seen so many of you have started, which is awesome to see, and my phone has even been buzzing while this webinar has been on with other people that are just signing into it, um, you will see the different threads they are called, which are the things with the hashtag or the pound symbol um, on the left side. We want you to start at the one that says, welcome, start here. Um, it just gives you a little overview and has links to um, a good video that just explains a little bit about Slack and um, the general help article section for Slack. So this is just for Slack help. This isn't for the COCP help, um, but we'll talk about that later. So like I said, um, to the left there is the channels. Now these are all broken up into the different specialties that some of you might be working in. Um, you are free to um, write in any of them um, and to monitor what's going on in there. Um, we just broke them up so it's easier so you can know where to have certain discussions. Um, if there's something missing that you feel like is a discussion that we need to be having, let us know and we can create a new um, thread, a new channel for you um, there to have that discussion. There's also uh, direct messages, which you'll see like in the bottom half or quarter of your screen on Slack. Um, that's where you can private message people um, that are a part of uh, our workspace. Um, yeah, so you can do that there. We would invite you to keep that um, more COCP related or conversations that you feel like are veering off topic in the general thread, you can take there to the private messages. All right, um, and I just want to 
show you quickly how you can um, respond to people's messages. Um, so this is just in our, our random channel, which can be any stuff that's not necessarily cleft care related. Um, if you see someone has said something in any of the channels that you want to respond to, instead of just typing in a message in the message box and hitting send, which will um, create like a really big list of uh, people's responses, you can reply directly to that message. Um, so if you go to the person's message that you want to respond to and kind of hover over it, this little box with all these different icons will appear in the right corner. And if you click on the um, comment bubble, it will say start a thread. Um, and you can click on that and it will open up this new dialog box to the right of your screen. And that's where you can type in your message directly to, um, in response to that person, but it will still appear um, to the, anyone who has access to the whole um, channel. Um, so you'll do that and you'll hit send and then oops, it will appear um, here, but it will also appear here as a reply. So then um, people can see the original post and then click on replies to see what people have said about that post. So that's just a way of neatly um, having those discussions so that everything related to um, the first post can be easily seen instead of, you know, when someone else introduces a new topic and then you have to scroll back and forth up and down um, the thread to try and see what people are talking about if they're not fully related. So that's just a good way to do that is to actually start a thread or to reply directly to a message on the thread. Um, also great about Slack is that you can control how much it annoys you um, with notifications. So in your general settings, once you create an account, you can set um, a time limit for when it will send you notifications. So you can have a snooze option for when you've gone to bed or if you're in meetings, you can set a time where it will um, stop giving you notifications. Um, and you can also set your notification preferences for each different channel. So if you want to see what's happening in the dental channel, but um, you're not actually fully involved in that, so you don't want to get a message if someone is just posting in the group, um, you can go to the little um, wheel there in the corner of any channel um, and click on it, and it'll bring this drop-down menu. You can click on Notification Preferences, and it will bring up this um, box where you can select um, if you want uh, notifications on your desktop and mobile apps, depending on how you're using it, for any message that comes in, for just mentions. So that means if someone um, wants to talk directly to you, they can use the at symbol and say at Hugh Brewster, this looked interesting, um, and then Hugh would get that specific notification. Everyone else would still be able to see it, but he would get a specific notification for it. Or you can select that there would be, you don't want any um, notifications for those. Um, those messages in that channel. Right. Um, and then just in general, if you're ever in Slack and you need um, some quick answers or help with Slack, if you go to the right of any channel and see those three little dots in the corner um, and click on them, it'll bring a drop down menu and there's help right there and it will take you to um, this help um, screen where you can look at different, type in your question and it'll bring up different articles for you. Um, so again, that's just for Slack help. If you uh, need help with the COCP in general or anything where it'd be better to talk with a specific person, um, feel free to in email us at info at cleftcircle.org and we can help you with any of that. So I know I threw a lot at you there. Uh, <laughs> so if there are any questions, I'd be happy to help with what I can now. So what questions do you have about Zoom or Slack? Feel free to unmute yourself and uh, tell us, or you can put it in the chat feature if that's better for you. All right, great. <laughs> Glad to see no one's got questions, but I'm always here if you ever have them. Um, oh, Siraj yeah. raised your hand. Yeah, that, that was uh, me. I'm uh, Vidya. Like, I just wanted to know, uh, do I have to, 
will I have to go read all the threads? Uh, will that or will all of it appear, or can I choose to only follow some stations? For sure. Some yeah. channels? Sorry, yes, you can choose um, to follow whatever you want. You will have access to all of them, so you'll see them all on um, the side back here. You will be able to see them all on the side there, but you don't have to read them. Um, when, they're, when people type in new uh, notifications or new comments, they will appear in bold and in white, um, so you'll know there's a conversation happening there. But like I said, you can go um, back here and set your notifications to all of the channels that you don't want to read the messages for and say, I don't want any. Um, and you can, as it says, you can mute the entire channel. So you won't receive notifications at all for them. But you would always be able to go back and look if you ever want to. Um, so it's always going to appear on the side, but you can mute it so you don't have to actually um, look at them if, you, if they don't pertain to you. Okay, thank you. Hi, maybe I missed this, but. Um what do you get pinged what is the way you get notified through your email how, how does it come to you yeah so you can set if it gets um, pinged i'm definitely getting notified. <laughs> yeah so you can um it depends if you use the mobile app um or if it's on your desktop if it's the mobile app it'll bring like a notification right onto your cell phone um onto your page or onto your front screen um but you can turn that off as well. You can also set it to send you email notifications. Um, and I believe it lets you set how frequently. So if you want them at the end of every day, if you want them as they happen, if you want once a week, just a summary of what happens. Um, so that you can set that based on if you want to follow the specific channel. So like every time someone posts in the speech therapy channel, then you can get a, a message or just when people um, message directly or directly uh, no yeah choose your name <laughs> so, so click the at your name category then um, you can get notifications just for that so it's all in your own settings so you kind of have to play around with that to pick um, what's going to work best for you um, but yeah that's kind of how it works if you have it on your um, desktop it's like a desktop app so you can allow it to if you want um, send you notifications where it'll like pop up at the little square in the bottom right corner of your screen and tell you that there's been a message sent or someone's commented on a thread. Um, you don't have to do that also. Um, so yeah, you kind of have to play around in your general settings um, and in the settings for the specific channels. But if you have any issues with that, um, email me and I can help you with that for sure. Anything else? I think we will move on then. Great. Again, that's Becca Sawyer. Uh, thanks, Becca. And um, I think one thing that that's I, <laughs> that holds in common all the professionals in class that I've met is uh, we're busy folks. There's lots happening. So what I really like, uh, just building on Kate's question, is that uh, Slack allows you to customize completely. You know, do you want to get any email or not at all? Do you only want to know if someone says, "Ask Kate Crawley, I have a question for you." and get pinged that way. Otherwise, you're going to say, hey, I'm going to check in once a week on Fridays. I'll just see what's happening on the boards and contribute a little bit here or there. So I think uh, the idea is not to add another responsibility or obligation or another busyness uh, into our lives, uh, but the hope would be that you can control through Slack what you want to know, what you want to follow along with, and how, how it works best for you. Uh, and, and it is a seamless connection between desktop, where a lot of us do some of our, our regular work, and then mobile when we're on the road or other things are happening. So you can even choose to have different notifications in different ways uh, on those things. So uh, I think as Becca mentioned, it probably the best way is just to, 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 to fool around with a little bit and make it work. If it's not working for you and you'd like it to work for you, then please let us know. And, and we're really happy to help. Uh, Becca is very skilled at, at navigating that through and we can probably get you set up in a way that, uh, that is helpful to you if you're finding it uh, challenging. So please feel free. We'd love this to, to be something that's helpful and not definitely not just adding to your to-do list or your inbox. Um, so that, where did that take us? Uh, so we're, we're over halfway through and uh, we just want to give you a little bit of content, something uh, that, that many of you will have seen in the overview that I, that I uh, sent along. Uh, but this is a, a newer piece for us at Transforming Faces and, and that really has emerged through our partners. Uh, 
in terms of what, what do we mean when we talk about uh, comprehensive cleft care. So I'm going to give you a very short overview uh, of, of what's there, but then hopefully leave a little bit for discussions or questions, and then ideally at the end, some of this migrates over to the discussion forum and Slack. So, uh, one of the challenges I found when I started, and, and again being uh, newer than probably everyone else on this call uh, to cleft care, was uh, just how much it felt difficult to explain exactly what we meant by comprehensive cleft care. It was a term that we had started to embrace, uh, you know, coming out of things like multidisciplinary, holistic, uh, comprehensive, you know, there's a bunch of, of different terms that were out there, but uh, I was struggling to articulate to, to donors and to uh, partners what exactly we meant. Uh, and so this is an acronym, CLEFT, uh, with a plus on the end, uh, and, and it seemed to capture really building on for us uh, some of the important work that had been done like by the ACPA in terms of defining what comprehensive cleft care, some research that, that some of you on this call even have contributed to. Uh, this was a, a way of distilling it in the same number of fingers that we have uh, that allowed our team to be able to articulate what, what we think of uh, when we think of comprehensive cleft care and what are some of those uh, real challenges, uh, especially in low and middle income contexts, in delivering and, and, and expanding uh, that care for, for children and their families. So very briefly, I, I'm going to walk through uh, what we mean for each uh, component of this acronym, uh, starting off with the CIRCLE, uh, which obviously shares a connection to the name of this network, the CIRCLE of Cleft Professionals. Uh, so what do we mean by CIRCLE? Well, um, I'm just going to move my screen out of the way. So what do we mean? We, we really mean that the key challenge in the C uh, of, of the, the CLFT acronym is to expand and deepen rehabilitative support for children, and obviously everybody, born with cleft lip and palate. And on the left-hand side, we've captured some of those key emphases uh, that we see in, in comprehensive cleft care teams around the world. Uh, obviously starting off uh, with surgery being a, a key component, so much of the work that all of us do really depends on having a, a safe, timely, uh, a helpful, uh, you know, masterful surgery, sur surgery experience to start. Uh, but, but we know that that's just one component of this whole circle. Um, you know, in an early version of this in the last year, uh, we didn't necessarily have a strong enough connection to that community engagement. But if you see now, uh, we've incorporated that into the circle as being that, that sense of working with, with communities, with families, uh, in mobilizing patients, in, in educating people on, on what effective cleft care can look like, what treatment options patients have, uh, that being a key component. Um, going on to audiology, hearing, hearing concerns, uh, you know, some of those dental care issues and oral care all the way around the world, uh, we know that, that cleft patients often uh, struggle with that. Uh, and that's connected obviously into orthodontics. Uh, and, and then in some of these, some of these more holistic elements uh, that, that our partners have, have really championed, you know, things about parent support, how, how moms and dads uh, can really uh, work with, with other, other uh, patient families uh, to get the best results uh, and, and working with addressing some of the bias and stigma uh, that, that parents of, of patients uh, really face. Uh, we know in many contexts, Transportation uh, to appointments is a key issue, uh, and so for us, that is part of that circle, is making sure that, that parents have the means uh, and, and the, the support and able to get to, to appointments uh, and, and to continue their treatment, and all the way through having that, uh, that counseling, issue, uh, counseling and, and support. Um, obviously, newborn nutrition, uh, it's not just newborn, but, but in particular, that sense of getting to a healthy weight uh, to have a safe surgery. Uh, and to be able to continue through processes potentially like NAM, et cetera, um, being a, a key element. So, so for us, in, in every context in which we work, we, we think of comprehensive cleft care, having that sense of always trying to expand or deepen the care and support, uh, that some of us are all are doing all these things, some of us are doing some, but irrespective of where we're starting, uh, where, we, where we're, we're starting from, uh, that the key is, is trying to always offer better and deeper care uh, all the way through. And, and these are just some of the areas that we've heard. It's not meant to be an exhaustive list, but some of those key areas uh, that's involved in, in having a, a, a true care plan that would go through a, a child's full life. Um, another major uh, element of comprehensive cleft care for us would be around that sense of local, uh, that we want to provide support to those affected by cleft open palate as close to home as possible and in an accessible language. 
uh, and accessible language, meaning you know, uh, making it so that parents can really understand and, and patients themselves can really understand what, what's happening, why things are happening, uh, what treatment options are available. Uh, so we're eliminating jargon as much as possible and making, uh, making it something the parents and, and, uh, and patients themselves can engage with uh, easily. Uh, but also then trying to, to limit the amount of time that's spent in that transportation, trying to get as close as possible to uh, the care. In the picture here, you can see, you know, speech therapists working, uh, you know, in a village context, trying to, to, to bring care as close as possible to home. And, and we know that in every context in which Transforming Faces at least partners, uh, that is a, a number one challenge. And, and even on this call, uh, we know people who face made it some of their life work to provide remote support. You know, how do you extend beyond the capital city or the main hospital or the main clinic some of that care uh, to, to patients and families where they actually live? So that's the L element, trying to make care as local as possible. Uh, definitely we know everywhere, <laughs> in grant applications, uh, everywhere we go, we hear about this evidence-based approach. And, and so we do think that's a critical in terms of what comprehensive cleft care is, is we're trying to use the best uh, the best evidence that's out there and, and having that shape what we do and how we learn. Uh, so we want to document treatment plans and outcomes and participate in ongoing professional learning. Uh, and, and that's a little bit of almost obviously what some of the energy that we've seen in these 70 uh, applications to the COCP so far. People wanting to engage in professional learning and learning how to, to make a more of an evidence-based approach or an evidence-informed approach in, in where we're going. Uh, here we have a left-hand side just a photo of a recent uh, workshop, 3D simulators work, workshop that happened uh, with our colleagues in, in Chile at Fundacion Gam uh, around, you know, learning uh, and being mentored in, in new ways of, of uh, palate repair. This is one example of, of moving towards an evidence informed approach. Um, under the F, fully inclusive, uh, definitely for comprehensive cleft care, it has to be delivered not just comprehensive in terms of the treatment options that are available, but to everybody. And, and so for many of us, who have a development background, that sense of, of providing care to everybody, irrespective of their socioeconomic status, their gender, their age, ethnicity, religion, you know, that, that everyone has access to this. And, and that's obviously a challenge everywhere we go, you know, trying to expand that care and make sure that everyone has equitable access. Finally, um, you know, this is something that we've learned in particular uh, from our close connection with the Cleft Unit at the Kids Hospital, uh, but that a team-based approach is, is really critical in, in making a, a comprehensive uh, re rehabilitative care plan for, for every patient. Uh, and so the, the key challenge under the T is to grow that capacity for a multidisciplinary unit to achieve and sustain positive treatment results for every child. Uh, having great communication amongst uh, the surgeon, uh, the orthodontics, the, the social workers. Uh, here, here's a quick photo of of uh, medical social workers in Thailand working as part of that CLIP, that, that CLIP care team uh, at Oberbrook Hospital and making sure that the treatment options really are, are, are well timed to the uh, to the patients that are there and and again that the, the, the patients are getting the, the care at the right time and, and what they require so that team-based approach being critical finally uh, to be real comprehensive class care uh, we really think that there has to be an attitude of growth, really trying to pursue initiatives and partnerships and advocacy that would improve CLC, CLP support for everybody. Uh, and, and just a quick picture again from TF experience, uh, some of you uh, and this, on this call, uh, thinking of Trina Sweeney and Kate Crawley, will have met these, these first uh, SLP students, uh, class, graduating class uh, in Ethiopia, uh, who have had a lot of exposure to class care and are very enthusiastic to, to, to run out uh, and, and make this profession work in, in Ethiopia. So that's a, an example of that kind of growth and partnerships that will allow uh, improved support for, for patients with SLP throughout the world. So that takes us a little bit through our, um, through, through our acronym. I, I think uh, you know, where we go from here is definitely into hopefully some discussion on Slack. Uh, we're already populating. We have a good slate of some initial webinars to offer that we'll talk about shortly. Uh, we're hoping uh, that you'll, uh, everyone on this call and others who will watch this later, will send us some links to some excellent research or tools that's out there and it's accessible that others can learn from. Uh, we have some conversations already ongoing with other organizational supporters who are key. Uh, so if you're involved with an, an international organization that would, might like to support this, let us know. Uh, and definitely by June, having a, a sense of a roundup of what we've accomplished. 
uh, so far uh, in, in a way of updating each other through a newsletter in June. So I'll open it up a little bit. We've got a few minutes left, uh, and thank you for your time so far. But um, my question to you is, uh, let's, let's focus a little bit on the CLFT uh, plus acronym. What stands out for you from that? What, do you, what does it make you think about? Can I speak? Please. Okay. I, I don't see. Well, I think uh, this is a very good idea because you put uh, people from different parts of the world with different disciplines in contact and we can share experiences uh, easily or easy. And uh, I was writing down. I will um, share with my colleagues for my team. They don't speak in English, so it's difficult for them to, to be here. I couldn't understand everything you said. My English is very basic, but I can understand the, the, the whole uh, concept. And um, it's, a, it's good because I, I, I wrote down that we can ask people or, or or consult people, professional, different disciplines from all around the world in the countries that are quite similar to us, to ours. So it's a very nice. And I will share um, a paper with a lip surgery technique that I, I learned from an Indian surgeon from the internet, and it's very good. So I'll put a, I post the, it uh, later. It's very nice. Thank you very much for your work. I'm sorry if my uh, if, if my pace of English was a little quick, so I, I will keep that in mind to, no. to, to make sure that I'm enunciating properly. Thank you, Julio. Anyone it's else? Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. This is uh, Fernando Salazar from Peru. Uh, I'm really happy to be part of this group. And I think that you're conducting a very nice approach to the complete care of the cleft children. Um, I will also share, as Julio said, uh, this uh, conference with my team, uh, who are more Spanish-speaking person also. Um, just uh, learning from, uh, from this conference, I would like to know if uh, somebody is interested in a approach to cleft care based in the school, basically with a voice therapist and psychologist. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Those are great questions. Anyone else? Hi, it's me, Kate Crowley. Um, Hi, Kate. Good morning. So I guess you know, you, well, we've talked about this many times and done work on it, but wow, I wish we could figure out a way for it not to be, for the L to really stand out for accessible language and uh, for this kind of discussion and um, hopefully the, um, the kind of sharing that we will end up doing and the kind of importance, if it's important, I'd love to be able to get it in the hands of many more people than simply the people that have access to English. And uh, I, I thought Becca might be able to work on that. She looks like she has those kind of high level technical skills that might be um, at least do some shifts so that, uh, you know, I've been working in the Francophone countries um, of Africa and learning French so I can do it in French, but wow, it, it makes such an enormous difference to reach people um, in a language that they can speak, forget, and I'm talking professionals, I don't expect us things to be in Ga or, you know, um, those kind of languages, but just so that we reach a much broader um, group of professionals in cleft care, because doing it all in English, as I know you know, Hugh, because um, we've worked on this stuff on this, um, in Ethiopia, limits um, the quality of care that these professionals can give if they can't be engaged in these kind of conversations. And so I would like to think if we could, you know, Spanish, French, I know Chinese, but Spanish and French at least, um, to have some, 
access to many more countries and many more kids, many more patients with cleft that can benefit from these kinds of discussions and sharing of information. So that's my one thing that I'd like to say. I think uh, it's a great, I mean, what I love is the logo. I think the logo is fantastic. And I don't know who figured that one out, but it's a really nice logo of lo the professionals looking in, sh you know, building on each other, mutual communication and support, and then having all the places, this is what I thought, all the countries all over the place that are on the outside, but the professionals looking in to bid then look out. So I thought that was great. I love a good logo. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Kay. Wonderful. And yes, yeah, thank you for the, the language piece. And I think we'll... We'll continue to say, yes, this is a starting point. And our, and our hope is, again, that the professionals will shape it. I think this is the local element. The language is going to be a key issue, as was already raised you know, on this call. Uh, and, and so we'll be looking for ways to be able to, to expand it. And I think you know, even as transforming phases, there's ways that we can be involved in, in uh, as we were uh, with Kate in, in Ethiopia and trying to make sure that, that resources can get in the right hands in an accessible local, dealing with this local challenge. So thank you for raising that. Hi, you, Suraj here. Hello, Suraj. Yeah. So, you know, like uh, Kit said, you know, you are, this is a way how, one more way where we have bridged the gap between professionals. So we are able to, uh, we can communicate our ideas and then share our information. Um, I will take the responsibility of searching about translation. And then there are some options available in Google. Maybe I will do that and then maybe I'll get in touch with Becca and see how best we can incorporate technology into this. That'd be wonderful, Suraj. And, and I understand you might have a little bit more, more time uh, available now that you've completed your, your dissertation defense. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah, Becca is the right, the right person to interface with uh, on that. So feel free to send her an email at info at cleftcare.org. Cleftcircle.org, yeah, me. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyway, I think that people who don't use English as a, a everyday language usually speak slower and maybe it would be easier for us to understand. It's a, maybe it's more difficult when the, the, the people who is uh, giving a lecture or, or, or teaching is uh, um, English speaking. Uh, but I think we will manage. I, I don't think it's a big problem. But anyway, this is the beginning. So maybe in some time we can have this in different languages also. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. That's a great comment, Julio. Thank you. Yes, but once in, I uh, just would like to, to say that this is a great work, great initiatives. Because uh, I think uh, before this, the grip care community, may be provided in many in local area, local prep centers. But in I think there will be very diversification of the grip care among the middle and low income countries that we have. So when we have the platform to cherries, uh, I think this will be very good. I think that is a great and, and good initiative. Thank you very much for this project. Thank you, Dr. Bowen. Any other comments? Yeah, hi. This is Rupa here, all the way from India. Um, Hello, Rupa. Hi. First, I'm so excited to see people I know, and more <laughs> excited to see people I'm meeting for the first time from around the world. So, a big shout out to everybody there. Um, and and um, you know, I do think I really want to look at this as a platform where we will learn and share. Uh, sometimes, sitting in our little corner of the world, you know, we are so we so remain in our little circles and I think this gives us a broader perspective. So I do look forward to, you know, learning and sharing with others because I think they're going to be important lessons for all of us. And by the way, this cleft plus is a great idea. Um, I think it really explains things that we've been struggling to try to explain to people for a long time. So I, I think that's a good way to go. I, we've discussed that Hugh, in the past and I think that's great. 
Definitely, uh, yeah, definitely. The the team at at Jin Chennai at, at Ramachandra University has been very instructive in TF's understanding of, of 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 this work. So thank you again. Yeah, part of our team is here already. Well, <laughs> at least three of us. So just a few more minutes. If anyone else would like to make a comment, Trina. We'll just uh, we'll just unmute uh, you here, Trina, if we can here. It's on there. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Just to say congratulations on a, a brilliant initiative. Um, I think it's something that we've all been conscious of when working in different places, but how isolated a lot of us are even over here. So I think this is just a wonderful opportunity to share ideas and hopefully to support some of our newer therapists coming into cleft care in the next few months. So well done, fantastic. Thank you, Trina. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, again, uh, you know, a lot of information in terms of the technical aspects, uh, in terms of just a brief taste of, of, uh, of a tool that, uh, that some of us have found helpful so far. And the hope, I guess, going forward is that, that we are on the, the precipice of, of some great learning, some great new connections, uh, and, and some, some real progress moving forward for, for uh, children and patients everywhere who are born with cleft lip and palate. Uh, so our encouragement, I guess, to everyone is to check out, check out uh, Slack, uh, see how that's working for you. Um, take the tech, take the initiative to reach out to someone else who you haven't met on this platform, uh, and then we'll take to heart also this, this continued concern about local. How do we make it accessible to more of our colleagues for whom English is uh, is, is not something that's easy? Uh, and I think part of that is being welcoming as people use Google Translate and other ways of, of being involved. But also, I think there's some technical uh, technology ways of, of of expanding this even as we start. And, and thank you, Suraj, for your initiative. Uh, and Becca will be thinking about this as well. Uh, so feel free to send us an email if you have other feedback, uh, things you didn't want to share in front of everyone or, or concerns. Uh, but we will continue to monitor what's happening and uh, try to be responsive. And we'll be in touch shortly uh, with our, our first slate of real more technical uh, webinar topics uh, as a way of getting us started. Uh, so thanks again for your time today. Uh, we're grateful uh, for your investment so far, and we look forward to a good collaboration. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.